Hello guys, hi everyone. Let me know if you guys can uh, hear me and see me clearly. And we have first Alicio. Hi Alicio, good to see you again. Thank you guys for joining me here today. Um, so this is our day four of the live. So if you have missed the previous lives, go ahead and check. You can check them out on our channel. So this whole week we've just been solving engineering problems. Uh, so make sure you check them out. They're common on the FE and you don't want to miss them. All right. So let's go ahead and say hi in the chat. Let me know who's here with us today. So we have Miriam. We have Alicio from rainy, uh, California. That's nice. Uh, let's see who else do we have here today so let's go ahead and wait for a few minutes guys till everybody joins us and then we can we can go ahead and start uh, solving uh, the trust problem so this is actually one of my favorite subjects uh, statics uh, along with other ones and um, and I'm actually really excited about this problem it's a very common problem on the FE exam not this one specifically but just zero force members in general so if you are taking FE civil mechanical or other disciplines uh, you will have this on your exam okay so it's very important to understand it very well so we are going to go over some concepts and then we're going to solve the problem and then so basically what we're going to actually do is solve two problems so we're going to take the same truss and then we're just going to change just one thing in that truss and then we're gonna solve it again. And you guys, it's 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 uh, really cool. I'm excited. But you guys will see how just by changing just the force, right? How it will change the problem completely. And so I can't wait to share that with you guys. Now, if you guys are inter are excited for today, go ahead and say yes in the chat. So we have a lot of the students that join us this week. I see you guys here again, which is amazing. That shows guys dedication and that you really want to pass your FE. Alicia, I know your exam, you said that it's getting closer. Uh, I, I hope you feeling good about it. You, so for those of you guys whose exam is close, I hope you guys are uh, feel, have a good feeling about it. I know there is comes like anxiety with the exam, of course, nervousness, that's common, that's normal, right? But I, I'm hoping that also uh, you feel a little bit excited because you feel r ready for your FE exam. All right. Okay, so who do we have? We have Ifa, we have Yasmin, we have Miriam, we have Joe. Hi, Joe. Good to see you here again. We have Richard. Uh, we have Copan Copane. That's hard to pronounce. We have uh, Dominique. We have uh, Morali, Russell, Kevin. Great, awesome guys. Awesome. This is amazing. And then we have Serena. Okay. Ooh, next week, Wednesday. All right. This is exciting. Okay. I hope these problems help you with your FE exam. And I hope you guys pass your FE. And then we have Oksana. It would be a great way to start the year, right? Right away, you pass your FE and then and then you're done for the year, right? No, I'm just, I'm kidding. There are a lot of, a lot of achievements. There's, there's always things we could improve and, and achieve. And I, you know, learning, we should never stop learning, right? And then that's, um, that's very important in life in general. All right. Okay. Awesome guys. Okay. So, um, few things before we go ahead and uh, start solving this problem. The first thing is, I hope you guys have been enjoying these lives. If you are, let me know in the chat. And so maybe we can do more of these lives in the future. I think I mentioned this yesterday in the live. Um, so so I, we can help you guys. Because the reason I did these lives uh, this, this week, because it's the beginning of the year, and I know a lot of you guys want to pass your FE, but then I also know that there are a lot of you who failed the FE exam before and losing motivation and uh, and just not feeling like studying or you've been out of school for a while and you really want to pass this test, but you just don't know how to get started. So I'm hoping that these lives are going to help you with motivation, help you to get started, right? Because if you guys, you know, I talk about this in a couple of my videos about motivation and how it works, you know, a lot of times motivation works from just getting started, right? A lot of people think that some people have it, some people don't, but it's not something that you just have. It's something that you get by taking actions, right? And so I'm hoping that these lives will help you to get started uh, and to, to keep going till you achieve your goal this year. So if you want more lives this uh, year go ahead and comment live and also guys if you are enjoying these videos please don't forget to like and subscribe it really helps our channel out um, the other thing that I would like to ask you guys as well and then after that we'll dive in into our problem is that for those of you guys who are familiar with our channel and you you've been following us for a while you know the type of content we post right we post uh, engineering problems interviews of students that pass their FE and then also tips on how you can 
pass your FE exam and study smarter and all that good stuff. Now, if there's something that you would like to see more of, let me know in the chat if you'd like to see more problems or more tips on how to be more productive, how to focus better, how to have deep work, all that stuff. Let me know in the chat and we can make more of those videos this year. And if there's something that we don't cover that you would like to see to see in our channel, go ahead and suggest uh, suggest that to us as well. And then we'll, we'll take a look at it and we'll try to, to post these videos. Because you guys remember that we here because I want to help as many people pass the FE exam, right? Because when I was preparing for my FE, I honestly felt uh, really overwhelmed. Uh, there were not a lot of people around me that were trying to pass their FE. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was studying the right way or it, ju it just felt lonely. It's such a lonely journey, right? Whereas like in college, we all, you know, we had classmates, we would study together. You would you would have maybe old past exams from, from your friends, right? Who are a bit older than you and so and that, that just the whole dynamic the whole it helped right that whole thing helps but then you graduate and then you're on your own and now you're studying for the fe on your own and so you're not you're really not sure so i i'm creating all of this so that i can help you guys as much as i can so it's less overwhelming and that you can enjoy it more which is going to help you understand better process the information and then hopefully succeed faster and pass your fe exam so please if there's anything we can do to help you guys just let us know in the chat all right okay guys awesome and just go ahead write uh, write stuff down and my team will take notes and then we'll consider all of you guys feedback all right now let's go ahead and um get started okay all right so let's let me go ahead and share my screen with you guys just give me a few minutes here i have to pull out my software and um and again what we're gonna do just like we did guys previously in the previous lives if you guys have any questions right about the problem please let me know so that i can clarify it right yeah, remember i'm here we're doing these lives so that i can clarify as many questions that you that you guys have okay all right so we are giving this trust right let me zoom out a little bit let me know if you guys can see the problem there's a little bit of a lag uh but eventually you guys see it but so we are giving this trust and we want to find the zero force members okay so now for those of you guys who are our students and you've taken statics before right our statics course or you went through it in our course the morning go ahead and start solving this problem and let me know what you got okay and you guys know who you are right so we have russell i want to see you answers we have miriam uh we have uh, alicio uh i think joe just joined us so a lot of you guys i know who you are so go ahead and and amorali i forgot amorali as well so go ahead you know try it let me know what you got in the chat okay for those of you guys who haven't gotten to, to statics yet um follow along with me okay so we're gonna go through some concepts and then and then we'll we'll go over it together okay so the first thing i would like to do is actually go over these concepts here now these notes here that i'm the um about how to identify zero force members they're not giving to you guys on the reference handbook okay so this is just something that you need to know and we actually do have it also in our cheat sheet. So if you haven't downloaded our cheat sheet yet, make sure, make sure that you guys do. Go ahead and comment cheat sheet in the chat and then one of our team members will send it to you guys, okay? So we have it here, very important. It will help you understand this better. So let's go over it. So the first thing, uh, when we have a zero member, it's, it's this. So if you have two non-collinear members, so non-collinear means they just don't act in the same line of action, okay? And I'll show you guys in an example. So let me actually draw it. So let me, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pick a different color here. And then, so let's just say, right? Uh, let me, let's see, if I draw it here, you guys will see it. So let's just say we have a member here, right? And then we have a member here, okay? So these two members, the are non-collinear right because they don't act in the same line of action versus if i draw this these two members so let's say we have this member here and then we have another member so these two members they do act in the same line of action so they are collinear okay is that clear let me know guys okay so if two non-collinear members are connected to a joint that is not subjected to any external loads what does this mean right well it means that we're not going to have you know an external force like here we have p 
right? And then we're not gonna have like a pin or roller or, or, or fixed end, right? So that's what external loads mean, right? So for example, at this point, if we don't have like a reaction force, right? Could be pin or roller, or if we don't have a, a, a load, an external load, right? then both members are going to be zero. Does that make sense, guys? So for example, again, if we take a look at this here, this example that I just drawn, if we don't have no external loads, right, both of these members are going to be zero, right? Now, however, so if we now we add, let's say we add here, uh, like, a, uh, let's do a pin, right? We add the pin here, right? So it's going to have the X and Y components, right? Now, none of these members are going to be zero. There, there are two members that are non-collinear, but we do have an external load, and so therefore, they can't be zero, okay? All right, so that's the first one. The second one, if three members, two of which are collinear, right, just like we showed here, okay? So let me, let me actually go down a little bit so that way you guys can see it, okay? So here, so like we said earlier, we have two members here, right? And they are collinear because they act in the same line of action. Now, let's and then let's let's keep reading the second option here. So, um, two of which are collinear and are connected to a joint, right? Now, this joint is not subjected to any external loads or reactions, right? Then the force member that is not collinear is zero. And here it says three members, so we're missing three members. Okay, so so this this is the third member. Okay, so we have. This is one, this is two, and then this is three, okay? Member one and two, they are collinear, okay? Member three is non-collinear to member one and two, right? So the member that is non-collinear is going to be zero, which means in this case, this member is going to be zero, right? And again, this is only the case when we don't have any external loads. As soon as we add a point load here or a reaction, this member cannot be zero, okay? Is that clear? If you guys, if that makes sense, let me know, and then we can go ahead and start solving this problem. So then, let's see, did anybody found the answer yet? Okay, so I'll give you guys a few minutes. Uh, so now let's take a look at this. So we have here, what do we have? So we have a reaction at A, we have a reaction at B, and then we have a reaction at E, okay? So now, Let's take a look at reaction A, okay? So reaction A is going to have only this member here, right? So it's, not, it's only going to have the, the horizontal uh, member. There's not going to be a force here, right? Because it's, it's, it's a roller, right? Um, so what that means is, so it means because here we, this member, member AB, right? So, okay, let's, let me take a step back. So we're going to take a look at joint A, okay? Now, at joint A, we have two members that are non-collinear, right? Do you guys agree? So AF, right, and member AB, they are non-collinear because they don't act in the same line of action, right? Now, member AF does have an external load, right? It has the reaction, okay? So this AF, okay, um, might not be zero, but, but we'll discuss it a little bit more. Let's take a look at AB. Okay, AB, we have nothing. There's no external force in AB. So therefore, AB is going to be zero. Okay, let me know if that makes sense. Okay, I, I see a lot of you guys got A. Um, okay, let me see. I think I think we have, can you, uh, so George, let me know which part you want me to repeat and I'll go ahead and repeat it. I missed your question because uh, I, I have the chat on another screen. Let me know which exact part you want me to go ahead and repeat. Okay, now. Let's, so you guys, um, so this is why it makes this problem tricky, and this is why I really like this problem. Um, so the answer is not A, B, and I'll explain to you guys in a little bit, but I'm so happy that you guys got A, B as a zero member. Now, let's go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and delete uh, what I just draw here so it's not confusing. And now, let's take a look at, so... Let's take a look at this here, okay? This this reaction. And then also, we have this reaction. So the pin is going to have two reactions, right? And then this one is going to have two reactions as well, okay? Now, 
guys, if we do the summation of the forces on the x is equal to zero, what is ax is going to be, right? And what's ex is going to be? So what is ex? I'll give you guys a few minutes. And then what's going to be ax? Okay, so if we take a look at, if we take a step back and take a look at this whole truss, right? And if we do the summation of the forces on the x, what is ax going to be and what is ex going to be? They're going to be zero, right? Because we don't have no, we have no lateral load in this beam, right? Because we don't have no lateral load, that means this reaction here is going to be zero, this reaction is going to be zero, right? So which means there's no force that's going to transfer to AF, right? So AF is going to be also zero, and then EF is going to be zero, okay? Now EF is zero because we have FD and um, FE and FD are two non-collinear members, right? And one of them doesn't have the external load, therefore it's zero. Okay, let me know if that makes sense. And the answer is B. So whoever got B, great work. Let me see who got B. We have Nelson got B. Uh, who else we got got B? Okay, so I'll, I'll give you guys, uh, no, not A. So it's going to be B, right? So it's A, B, A, F, and then E, F. Okay, let me know if that makes sense, guys. Okay, so, um, so I think John mentioned, can you repeat why A, B is zero? Okay. So AB is zero because here we have at A, at joint A, we have two members that are non-collinear, right? Is that clear, guys? So now at this point here, we're going to have an, an external load from or the reaction, right? We're going to have AX, okay? Now this member here, we don't have any reaction. It doesn't have no external load. So therefore, this member is going to be zero, okay? Let me know, John, if that helped. Do we have any other questions? George, the first part in joint F. The first part in joint F. Um, I don't remember that. You mean on, in, in here? Like if this, this point here, I, let me know if that's what you're asking about. Uh, we have Alicia, joint A follows rule I. Uh, yes, it does, because we have two non-collinear members and they're connected to a joint. Yes, it does, okay? Uh, let's see, do we have any, uh, so Richard, uh, so the answer is going to be A, B, well, I have it as, so it's going to be B, right? It's A, B, A, F, and then E, F, okay? I, guys, I, I know it's, it's, a, it's a bit tricky question, right? But again, so you look at each joint. So something that I always tell you guys is to look at, at each joint and analyze. And another thing that actually really helps is seeing how the forces will get transferred, right? So in fact, let's do that together. So here we said we have EX, right? Okay, let me, let me actually do green. Let's, let's do this. Let's see how all these forces are gonna transfer in this truss. So we have EX here. So this force here, it's going to be, is going to go to this member, right? Okay. Now this P here, right? And this, this force here, the, those, bo both of those forces has to go somewhere, right? So they're going to transfer to this force here. Okay. Now this force, right? It has to also go somewhere, the horizontal, because it's a diagonal, right? A diagonal force, we have to break it down into two components, right? Again, go back to the cheat sheet, right? So the cheat sheet here, we talk about that, the fast method of joints, okay? And then you can take a look. So here we have the diagonal force, we broke it down into y and x, okay? So that means now this force here, this horizontal force needs to go somewhere, right? So it has to transfer to this member, CD, right? Now, this member has to transfer to CB, right? And then also this reaction here, BX, right? Well, BX is, is going to be zero, right? Because we have no external forces, right? Now, BC cannot be zero because CD is going to have a force, so it has to transfer into this member, okay? All right, this force here, P, is going to transfer to CF, okay? And then for B, so BC, this force needs to transfer to this diagonal, horizontal, which means we're going to have force on the y direction as well, okay? So now we can see that the force is in equilibrium, right? We have all the forces being transferred into the truss. Does that make sense, guys? Let me know if this ma made more, if it helped to see it, to see how the forces got all transferred, right? Now, if I go ahead and delete the force at C, right? So let's say we delete force at C, okay? I'm just going to go ahead and delete it as an example. 
So if we delete force at C, what's going to happen? Remember, CF is going to be zero, right? Why? Okay, well, let's take a look at C, right? So what do we have at C? Well, we have three members, okay? So then we, let's take a look at point two, right? Three members, okay? Two of which are collinear, yes. So this one is collinear to this one, right? Now we have no external force. We don't have any external force. We just removed it just so I can show you guys, right? So therefore, the third member that's non-collinear is going to be zero, okay? So that's how the second uh, rule applies, okay? Let's see. Now, let me actually see where you guys have any comments here. Uh, let's see. We have Ifa. Are you treating AX like a third member? Are you? So, no, no. Okay. Great question, Ifa. Okay. So, it's a reaction force, right? It's an external load. AX is not a third member, okay? So, do, are we still a little bit confused about AX, guys? Okay, let me explain it one more time. So we have here two members, right? So we have member AF or AB, right? And then member AF, okay? I'm gonna, let's forget about the, the roller for a second. I'm just gonna put here just, just a force, AX, okay? We don't know what this force is, is right now, okay? So just, just follow along with me. All right, so then now let's take a look at the rules that we have. What do we have? We have rule one, right? If we have two non-collinear members that are connected to a joint, which is the case, they are connected at joint A, member AB and AF are non-collinear, right? And they're not subjected to any external loads, okay? Yes, so member AB, right? Member AB doesn't have no external loads, okay? Therefore, this member here is going to be zero. Does that make sense, guys? Now, when we took a step back and we took a look at the whole truss, we found out that AX is also zero, which makes the member AF zero, right? Because there is no force that will be transferred, okay? That, does that make sense, guys? Let me know in the chat. This is very important problem. Here's the thing. You're going to get at least one problem in your exam on this. And you have to make sure that you understand the concepts really well. It really also helps to transfer the, the forces into the truss so that way you can see how all these, uh, the, the reaction forces, the external loads, how they transfer into the truss. Is it going to be in equilibrium, right? Because we don't want this truss to be moving. It has to be in equilibrium, right? Uh, so, okay. Uh, let's see. Can you please explain why x is zero? Okay, so great question. So if we take a look at, so I have to redo the problem because I changed it when I tried to show you guys the case of, uh, let me just quickly draw. So remember guys, we had the force here, right? We had an external force originally in the problem. I removed it just to show you guys how rule two applies. But, uh, but Bavini, so if we take a look at our truss, right, as an overall, right, we have no lateral loads. Lateral loads means like, you know, horizontal loads, right? We have no, we only have the vertical loads, okay? So when you take a look at the whole truss and if you do the summation of the forces on the X, right, you get no lateral loads. So therefore, your AX is going to be zero. Let me know if that makes sense, okay? Okay, guys, um, now I think everybody follows. Now let's take a look at uh, the, the second problem, okay? Is everybody ready for the second problem? I, I think the second problem is going to help, okay? All right, let's take a look at it, okay? I wasn't expecting it to be so big. Okay, there we go. Now, what's different in this problem is the external force at D, instead of having it vertical, now we have a lateral force, right? How is this going to change the problem? Now I'm gonna let you guys think about it for a minute and I want you guys to let me know. So I'll, I'll, so we've covered so many concepts, okay? So I want you guys to solve this problem now. So I'll, I'll give you guys a few minutes, look at it, follow the rules, okay? Let me, let me, have, let me get the, the rules closer so that way you guys can see them, okay? So, I'll give you guys a few minutes. I'm going to uh, drink some tea. And then while you guys think about it. All right. So 
think think about the rules that we said right look at at each joint try to determine do we have any external loads do we have any reactions i need to see an answer from you guys what's going to be the answer for this problem and by the way guys for for those of you guys who, who struggle with statics okay consider getting one of our statics course it is on sale right now you can only get it for 99 dollars see the thing is statics is very important for the fe or for engineering it's the foundation of engineering and i actually noticed that a lot of people struggle with statics and that's why it's the i created a course just for statics i remember when i went to college i had so many friends that failed statics and then so many missed the concepts in statics and they really struggled in mechanics of materials fluid mechanics structures all those classes so it's it's the foundation of engineering so if you struggle with statics consider getting this course if you're interested just uh type statics and one of uh, our team members will send you guys the coupon code and then you can apply at the checkout to get it just for 99 dollars. if you have the bundle course don't get statics you probably you have it already for free um now if you understand the concepts of statics and you like you know what fans i'm good don't get the statics course i i don't want you guys to waste time or money it's very important to keep that in mind guys you want to make sure that you have the right study material right you want to learn as much as you can as fast as you can so that you go in you take your fe you pass and you go excel in your career if i if you're good with statics you don't need to get it and spend two weeks you know going over something that you already know so don't waste your time and energy in it so this is just if you really struggle with these type of questions like centroid moment of inertia trusses the reaction forces all these concepts are common on the fe you will get so many questions so if you do struggle then consider getting it uh it's it, like i said it's 99 dollars, and actually it's uh, for the, the first 50 people that get it uh will get it for 99 dollars. so whoever gets it first the first 50 people will get it for that price all right okay guys uh, let's see. What do we got? We got AB, Richard only. Awesome. Great work, guys. Joe. Okay, good. Um, okay. Okay, Aoife. Okay, sounds good. If you, if you have more questions or you want to, you know, discuss it with us, let me know. Uh, you can shoot us an email and then we can see if, if, if you should get it or, or not. Because again, I, I really don't want you guys to, you know, like waste time, right? I always, my students will always be like, hey, do, you know, do I need statics? Should I just go through the morning course? And, and a lot of times I'm like, you know, if you don't struggle with statics, do not waste your time, right? Uh, so, so that's only if you really need it. Okay, so we have Joe, AF and EF, uh, not zero BC of, because of, yes, great work, guys. Awesome. Russell, the P is now an external force in the X direction. So, amazing guys see you guys are getting the concepts okay so nelson you said be careful it can't be b right because now we have a lateral force right we have a lateral force at d so now like like you guys said so which means that ax right it's not going to be zero and then also uh e right ex is also not going to be zero okay so that means ef and fa cannot be zero however the point so if we again if we take a look at joint a right we have no external force here we have nothing right we have two members that are non-collinear right rule one and those two members is ab and af right so which makes ab is going to be the zero force member so the answer is going to be a okay now if you guys like this problem go ahead and thank pranitha because she's the one who actually came up with this problem the the first problem uh and and then she she shared it with me so go ahead and thank her because she's the one who who came up with it uh but yeah it's when she sent it to me yesterday i got excited i was like this is a great problem because it really covers a lot of you know you look at it first and then you're like this is easy right and so these are the things that you got to pay attention to on the fe exam you get so many questions like this where it's like you go this is easy but then there is something there where it's like could easily throw you off if you don't have that deep understanding of the concepts and that's why again i always tell you guys this and and i'm always gonna say it make sure that you guys understand what you're doing right it's not about just plugging the numbers in your calculator or grabbing that equation and putting the numbers 
anyone can do that, right? It's not about that. It's the steps behind that. It's the steps before you get to that point, right? If you're going to go grab an equation from the reference manual, before you do, ask yourself, why are we using this equation? Can we use something else? What if the problem gives me this instead, right? Just like I did here, guys. What did we do here, right? What did I do? We only changed this force, changed the whole problem, right? The whole problem changed, the whole answer changed. And what we did, we only did one small change in the problem. So if let's say, you know, uh, I give you a problem, right? And then, and then uh, you go into the exam and then you expect to get the same exact problem. You get in there and then it's, it looks similar, but then they change one thing, right? That gonna throw the, throw you off completely and then you might apply the same steps and then you're going to get it wrong right and that's why i always ask you i tell you guys like if you want to have a good you know i had a student who graduated in 1996 and and she had she struggled with um understanding the problems and understanding the concepts she actually passed her fe exam just like two months ago uh but at first it was a struggle for her right and i asked her she you know to to always ask herself engage with the material and always ask herself three questions right what if right what if they give me this instead okay how would i attempt the problem we do this all the time guys sometimes we do it in our courses but it's very important that you do it as well you know if we just change one thing in this problem how would we solve it differently right or if you're grabbing an equation why why are we using this equation okay don't just you know grab it and then the other thing is like can we can we use something else to solve for this problem right and so these questions are going to help you have a good understanding of the concepts reinforce everything that you're learning and then remember it for your fe so another thing i want to share with you guys is make sure that you're studying smart and not hard right and don't study so much material just because you have so much material that you're studying it doesn't mean you're studying the right study material and 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 it's not about like studying hard but it's about like being smart right it's about when you are doing that problem are you asking the right questions are you understanding the concepts that's better than doing 10 problems and you're just grabbing the equations and plugging the numbers and not really understanding what you're doing do you see the difference versus if you just pause and you go like well hold on what if we change this what if we do this why did we use this equation can we use something else now it's completely different now instead of doing 10 you don't need to you only need to do one you understand it very well and you move on to the next concept right so keep these points in mind because again i know a lot of you guys you know you're working right you have family you have busy lives and you know you don't have the, the whole time to do like 100 problems right and so this is how you can save time this is how you can be more efficient more productive with your studying and pass your fe faster definitely that as well all right okay guys any other things i feel like a lot of you guys really enjoyed this uh this problem let's see do we have any other questions um let's see got it thanks pranita okay amazing all right yeah thank you pranita this was a great great problem and i really enjoyed uh sharing it with you guys okay let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen and then just check on you guys see how is everybody doing um so tomorrow it is going to be our last live um for youtube for those of you guys who are uh, in our courses we will continue doing our weekly meetings i hope to see you guys there on our saturdays uh every saturday uh but but for youtube this will be tomorrow will be our last live we are gonna have a little surprise tomorrow so just make sure you uh you, you show up you don't want to miss it if you don't have our courses um and the other thing I want to discuss with you guys today, and if you don't have the answer for today, think about it and maybe bring it to me tomorrow and then we can discuss it. I just want to check in with you guys and see, you know, a lot of you guys, I, I, I realized from the lives we had uh, this week is that uh, you guys want to pass your FE. So I asked you guys this whole week, who want to pass your FE? And you guys comment in 2023, right? And in fact, if you want to pass your FE, go ahead and comment 2023 again. Uh, it's just like, it, it reinforces it. it. It's just good for you to go like, I'm going to pass this year. There's no question in that, right? So then my next thing is, um, do you have a plan in place? That's really important, right? Do you know exactly how you're going to achieve that? Because like I talked about motivation earlier, in fact, when I was actually, um, when I started this 
my, my business and these courses, I started to talk to a lot of students who are going through the FE and trying to study for the FE to understand what they struggle with, right? And a lot of times I got people just struggling with motivation. And in fact, I started to do research and I read this book that's called Motivation is a Myth. And it was an awesome book. I really liked it. Helped me too with my motivation. Um, and so, you know, a lot of the things that that book mentioned, and, and I'll just uh, just uh, summarize it for you guys here just so you have it with you. So like I said earlier, motivation is not something that you just have or you're born with or some people have it and then you don't, but it's just something that you get by taking action, right? So that's the first step. It's just you just start. You take action, you just start. And that's why we did, we did these lives. Now the tricky part is, and I think that's the one that a lot of people struggle with, is that how do you have a lasting motivation, right? Because having motivation today, easy. Having motivation tomorrow, easy right having motivation a month from now that could be a struggle right and then if you're going to be studying for like five months six months depend on your study plan you could start losing motivation slowly slowly and i'm sure a lot of you guys that's how it started you start strong you start studying and then slowly you start losing that motivation and then before you know it, you postpone your exam, uh, you go like, uh, I'll do it another time, another year, you kept pushing it, kept pushing it, 2023, you found yourself, you haven't passed the FE, right? You get the whole picture. So then the, you ha what you have to really focus on is how do you have, how to make sure that you have a lasting motivation till you pass your FE exam in 2023, right? That's the goal. That's what we want to do. We want to make sure that all of you guys pass your FE exam this year, right? If that's your goal, and I'm seeing a lot of you guys do want to pass your FE this year. So how do we make that happen, right? So then the next thing is you have to have a plan, right? You have to have a process and you have to forget about the goal. So this is something I always say, don't focus on the goal because here's the thing. Yes, you want to pass your FE. I get it, right? But imagine you're in math, you just started, you're studying math, and then you remind yourself that I need to pass the FE, right? And you have 14 different subjects that you still have to go through and study. Imagine you're going to lose motivation right away, right? Because you're very far away from that goal versus if you have a plan, right? And you have a to-do list today, I need to study, I need to do five math problems and you do them, you're going to feel good about it. You're going to go, okay. So you just focus on every day. You have a process, you have a plan in place and you just focus on that and you forget about the past and you forget about the future as well and forget about your goal, right? That's how you're going to have a lasting motivation. Another thing that's really important is progress. So after process, it's progress. It's making sure that you are progressing, making sure that you are learning, right? Because if you're not making progress and you're always stuck, constantly stuck and you're not learning the concepts, again, you're going to start losing motivation, right? Easy, right? So you have to make sure, because here's the thing, when you make progress and you're like, oh my God, I got this problem. Like so many of you guys understood the second problem that we did, right? The first one was tricky. It's normal, right? Because you, you just got these concepts. I just explained them to you. But once you got rule one, rule two, you guys were able to apply those concepts to problem two, right? And then you got them. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys feel confident now, right? That's progress. It's when you do problem, yes, the first problem you might struggle, but then the second problem, you're like, I got it. Third problem, you're like, I got it even quicker, right? And then that's going to give you what? A lasting motivation. When we're doing something and we're good at it, we feel confident and we want to do it again. We want to show up again the next day and then keep doing it, right? So these are few things that you guys can add to make sure that you have a lasting motivation so that you don't give up on your FE, so that you keep studying, you stay consistent, you keep showing up till you pass your FE exam, okay? Is that is that clear, guys? Does that make sense? And it's the small steps, yes. Thank you, Miriam. It's about the small steps that you take every day, right? It's about showing up every day, studying, doing the best you can, and then you just keep adding onto those steps and the foundation that you are building, right? Like I said, if you struggle with studying, right you're gonna get to mechanics of materials you're gonna struggle you're gonna go to the next topic you're gonna struggle because you're missing those foundations right so it's very important to keep building the foundation keep building those steps and then just focus on the present do the best you can and the the, the so I wasn't planning to share with you guys these things what I was gonna say so this was like five let's go back to five minutes ago what I wanted to ask you guys is what is your biggest struggle when it comes to the FE 
That's what I want to know. Um, if, if it's motivation, let me know. If you failed the FE and you're afraid to fail, let me know. If it's uh, study material, let me know. If it's just like trying to remember the material from college, whatever it is, what is your biggest struggle? You know, if you have studied for this exam before and you've been in this journey before, what do you think that one thing that you feel like it's really like stopping you from you know, keep from showing up and studying and passing your FE. What is that one thing that you struggle, you guys struggle with? And, um, and let us know in the chat and we can help you guys with that. Um, maybe we can talk about it tomorrow. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll create more videos on these tips and to make sure that you guys are ready. Because the thing is, you know, I always say this as well, is that when it comes to passing the FE, you have, you have two things, right? Half of the battle is study material right that's of course because if you're not studying what's on your fe you're not gonna pass right if you're not understanding if you're not learning if you're not progressing you're not gonna pass right so that's the first thing so half is study material but the other half is mental right the other half is having somebody having a support system right having someone to help you to motivate you to to show you the route to you know to make sure that you're on the right track to give you tips to make sure that you're not learning the wrong thing to you know to be there for you if, w when you're not feeling like studying right so that's the other half it's the mental and making sure that you know you're enjoying the process and and you tackling this you feel confident you're building confidence right the first day when you're going to show up you're not going to feel confident 100 percent. you're not you're going to feel really down you're going to be like i forgot this material i don't know how to solve this problem your self-esteem will be down but with progress with learning this goes back to the study material but then also with the support system you are going to build that confidence slowly and slowly till one day you're going to be like okay i get it i'm ready to take my exam right and i think alicio um alicio might be there a little bit which which makes me happy and, and you can go ahead and confirm that i hope you feel that way alicio because i know your exam is is close but um so uh, I hope uh, Ines and my, my team members, so we have Ines, we have Rim, uh, and we have Pranita. So guys, make sure you take notes uh, and, and just write those things down and make sure that we share these tips with, with the students so that we can help you guys this year to achieve your goals. All right, awesome. So we have, uh, let me read some stuff. So we have Crystal Gonzalez having a plan. Okay, so Crystal, go ahead and email us. We can we can uh, schedule a call with you and then and then help you with that, help you with the plan. And um and then also guys, we do have a study plan on our site. We actually we have couple. So uh, so Ines or Wim, please go ahead and share the link to the study plan. Uh, we actually had so many students who used exactly that study plan and it helped them pass. There's study plan for three months, there's four months, there's six months as well. Having a plan is really important. And Crystal, go ahead and download those study plans and then see if it helps you, okay? If it doesn't, feel free to reach out to us and then we'll, we'll try to help you come up with the study plan. Another thing I recommend guys to do when it comes to having a plan is time block, right? We talk about this in our YouTube channel. You guys can go ahead and check it out um what else we have so there's time block there's a to-do list right this is something i always mention so quickly so time block is when you block out time right for in your schedule for when you'll be studying every day and you try to not change that time so you know crystal what you could do is like every day after work maybe you hit the gym just for 30 minutes you don't even need to go to the gym you can just do some exercises at home just to you know to transition from work to studying right you need to switch your mind now um and then you dive in you start studying maybe at like seven to like nine every single day you show up you study seven to nine nothing will change that right and so that's how you start building those habits that's the first thing you got you guys can do the second thing is a to-do list right it's important to create a to-do list make sure it's specific make sure it's realistic write down exactly what you're gonna cover the next day don't do it the day of or when you're about to study right because when you're about to study when you show up at that seven you want to be ready to go right so that's how you're going to be more efficient you know exactly what you're going to study you know exactly what material to use you dive in you start studying and you're going to be efficient right and you just and then after that it's just about learning and then showing up and doing the best you can so that's that's for that let's see uh so alejandra so much material uh passed the fe recently oh amazing cody congratulations awesome Thank you. Thank you for joining us today and sharing that great news. It's always great to have that because I hope that inspires you guys, right? You guys could be next and I can't wait to see you guys 
uh, you know, achieving your goal and also mentioning, hey, I passed my FE. I can't wait to see all of you guys uh, achieve that. So just, you know, just hold on to that. You guys will be next. You guys will get there. Okay. Uh, we have Alicia. What I struggle is knowing the symbols from the words in the question. That's a really good one, Alicia. And so that one, it's just really about like, uh, you know, like, like just practice a lot of problems. And then another one, Alicia, you could do is cheat sheets for that, right? So if we do stress, right, then you do symbol stress, uh, shear, you do that and you have that cheat sheet so that way you remember it, right? So that could help. The cheat sheets could really help you with that, Okay. Okay, we have Crystal. What topic to study first? Start with math, right? Because if you start with a hard topic, you're gonna, and you're just starting right now, you're gonna lose motivation real fast, real quick, right? And it's also about building that foundation, right? If you struggle with trigonometry, you're gonna get stuck in statics, right? It's very important that you guys start from the beginning and don't jump from one topic to the other. Make sure you finish math first, then you go to engineering economics. Again, it's about having that lasting motivation, right? Progress, you're gonna see, oh, I finished math, check, right? You're gonna feel confident. You're gonna wanna show up again tomorrow to go on to the next section so that you can finish it and then check it off, right? So, so, but if you go to math, you suck, then you move on to static, then you move on to dynamic. At the end, you're gonna feel like I haven't accomplished anything, right? I've just been jumping from one topic to another, right? So it's very important you try to finish the subjects before you move on to the next section, okay? Um, all right, so we have consistency, uh, been out of school for a long time, uh, let's see, uh, what else we have? Uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you for go with Kenza. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Uh, I have to relearn these concepts refresher. I'd probably waste others time. Uh, it took a while to get used to studying. Yes, it does take a while. And in fact, guys, we, I'm actually working on a video right now. Um, that's, uh, that talks about how to start studying because it's just been so long and I think this is something that people really struggle with. And uh, actually, in fact, I think we're posting it Monday. I just filmed it this morning. Um, and, and so I share a lot of, I share seven tips that w that's really gonna help you to start studying again. It just, it does take time like Elisio mentioned. Um, and you just, the key is about making sure that you guys are aware of that. One, you can't get frustrated. It's normal to not be able to focus for long hours because you haven't done it for so long. Uh, you have to try to sit through it, right? If you get a block time for an hour to study, you do nothing during those hours except studying, right? And if you look at a problem and you're stuck, you just sit through it. You power through it. You don't talk to anyone. You remove all distractions, right? That's why I tell you guys, don't go to social media. Don't check your emails. Make sure you have no distractions during those times. And so what you do is you force your brain to just focus, right? Because you've been always like focusing on so many things. It's been so long since you've just focused on one thing. And so now you have to train your brain to do that, right? Just like a muscle, right? Uh, and so what you need to do is you got to create a, 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 an environment for that. You remove all distractions and you sit through it, right? If you struggle through following, you don't want to study, that's okay. Just sit, do nothing for like that hour because you block that hour. You give yourself that hour. Guess what's going to happen? The next day you're going to gain more focus and then more and more and, and so on. And and so you just, you just got to do that. But I'll share with you guys that video and I'm sure it's going to help a lot of you guys um, with, with the focus and, and how to start studying again. All right, let's see. Uh, consistency is the key. So I'll go ahead and uh, share with you guys some tips on that uh, consistency and then I, I study plan and then there was some few things I'm sure my team took notes. So we'll try to share with you guys uh, with some of the um, answers or help you guys with your struggles. Uh, maybe I'll talk about some of the ones that you guys mentioned tomorrow. So we'll leave it for tomorrow. Um, and yeah, so let's see, I think that's it. So let me know again, guys, uh, if you guys, you know, need help with anything, as always, either leave a comment or feel free to reach out to us. Uh, let us know what you guys, uh, you know, if you struggle with something specific, make sure to sh just send us an email. Uh, we have a whole team here that can help you guys. We have engineers, we have uh, like a support dedicated team that can answer any of you guys' questions and help you with your FE preparation. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, and as, as always, look, 
it, it is going to be a challenge, right? It, it's not an easy thing to do, okay? So knowing that and just and just hearing that, it's going to help a lot. So that's the first step, acknowledging that this is going to be a, a tough challenge, a journey, right? And so the next step is just about doing the best you can, be patient, be kind to yourself, prepare everything that you need to do, right? Try to show up as much as you can, even though I know that a lot of you guys work full time, some of you have kids, some of you have families, so it can get really tricky, but you you just, you, some things you don't have control over, right? But what you could do is just do the best you can. You show up, you go today, I'm gonna try to study at least just for one hour, right? And then and celebrate that. When you do, be like, that's awesome, I did that one hour, Tomorrow, I'm going to show up again and do one hour. And when it gets easier, you can increase that hour, right? And also, guys, if you have families, I would, you know, ask for help, right? And talk to, I had so many students who, you know, had kids and, and they talked to their partners like, hey, please, if you can take care of the kids during this time, um, you know, just so that way I can study. And this is just temporarily, just for the next four, five months, uh, you know, just, just have that conversation and it could really help a lot. Um, make sure you have a good support system it helps it really does and um, what else and yeah so and if you guys of course if you need help we are here for you to help you guys I hope these problems are helping you uh, and um, yeah I think that's it for today thank you guys again thank you for joining us it was great to see a lot of you guys here I hope to see a lot of you guys tomorrow and don't forget if you are interested in the statics course make sure that you guys get it it's the first 50 people get it for $99 um, and again only get it if you struggle with statics okay so if you struggle with moment of inertia centroid trusses and reaction forces these are very common problems on the fe and um yeah have a great productive day make sure that you guys get some studying done okay and i hope to see all of you guys tomorrow all right bye guys thank you